good morning dears welcome back to england english classroom yes we have discussed some items from first time evaluation or that uh, appeared in first time evaluation tools today we are going to see one more item this is unfamiliar passage it is also simple but you have to practice to get full score you can see the questions that appear in the previous question papers okay shall we see the first one adithu nokkale see it appear in 2016 what you have to do is uh, there will be some paragraphs or anecdotes some short stories or some writing about something and it will be very easy it will be of the level of the passages in your reader or just below that so it is very easy to attend what you have to do is just like you do in the case of textual passages you have to read the paragraphs twice or thrice then we see to the questions then again revisit the paragraph or the passage certainly you'll get the answer means right and down and down one item will paragraph who I can know ചോദ്യങ്ങൾ വായിച്ച് മനസ്സിലാക്കുന്നു വീണ്ടും പാരഗ്രാഫ് വായിക്കുന്നു കറക്റ്റായിട്ട് നമുക്ക് അതിൻ്റെ ഉത്തരം കിട്ടിയിരിക്കും അഞ്ച് മാർക്ക് ഉറപ്പാണ് സോ യു ഷുഡ് പ്രാക്ടീസ് ഇറ്റ് വെൽ റൈറ്റ് ഫസ്റ്റ് റീഡ് ദ ഫസ്റ്റ് പാരഗ്രാഫ് ദർ ഇസ് എ സ്റ്റോറി ഓഫ് എ മാൻ ഹു തോട്ട് ഹി ഹാഡ് എ റൈറ്റ് ടു ഡു വാട്ട് ഹി ലൈറ്റ് വൺ ഡേ ദിസ് ജനൽമാൻ വാസ് വർക്കിംഗ് അലോങ് എ ബിസി സ്ട്രീറ്റ് സ്പിന്നിങ് ഹിസ് വർക്കിംഗ് സ്ട്രീറ്റ് റൗണ്ട് ആൻഡ് റൗണ്ട് ഇൻ ഹിസ് ഹാൻഡ് and was trying to look important a man walking behind him objected you ought not spin your walking stick round and round like that he said i'm free to do what i like with a walking stick argued the gentleman of course you are said the other man but you ought to know that your freedom ends where my nose begins The story tells us that we can enjoy our right and our freedom only if we do not interfere with other people's right and freedom. It's a very interesting and very uh, uh, didactic uh, story. Is this, uh, uh, how, can, how can we say it has a good moral, right? You know that. Okay. And uh, where does our freedom end? That is the message that this conveys. Okay, very important one in a social life, right? So, you have to read it once again. You have to read it. Okay, now shall we see the questions? Try to answer them and then let us see the answers. First question is, why was the gentleman on the road spinning his walking stick round and round? Question is clear? Right. see the answers answer please right next question who opposed the gentleman's action find the answer please next one what was the argument what was argument of the gentleman find it right next one Next question, what is the message of the story? Right? Now, suggest a title to the story. Then, you should write a phrase or a word that covers the whole uh, sense of the story or the important idea of the story. Right? Okay, I think you have done it let us see the answers first one why was the gentleman on the road spinning his walking stick round and round and that is the answer and the reason why he was spinning his walking stick round and round you can attend that or uh, right in two ways the answer in two ways first one he was trying to look important or very rare one can come and do it because he thought he had every right to do what he liked you may write either of the three of them write ellam cheyala adhigam endu kanikkanava who opposed the gentleman's action aranadu adu edirthathu a man walking behind him 
what was argument of gentleman his argument was that he was free to do what he liked with his walking stick endu vaanam cheyan adhigaram undu nan okay right what's the message of the story we can enjoy right and our freedom only if we don't interfere with other people's right and freedom got it dear mattullavare swandathil payarthunnadodi allengil avalathunnodi nammala swandathinte parigam theedu avasanichu right so is the title to the story that's up to you may write anything uh, just like to freedom limit of freedom or judicious judgment any of that that is up to you right okay how it feels is quite simple okay now let us move on to next year's question read the following passage and answer the questions that follow yamra akub akbar was in the habit of putting riddle and puzzle to his courtiers he often asked questions which were strange and witty it took much wisdom to answer these questions once he asked a very strange question the courtiers were dumbfounded by this question akbar glanced at his courtiers as he looked at them one by one the heads began to hang low in search of answer it was at this moment that biba and the count people who knew the nature of the ambara quickly grasped the situation and asked may i know the question so that i can try for an answer akbar said how many crows are there in the city he thought even a moment thought biba replied there are 50500 and they turn cross my lord how can you be sure asked akbar biba said make a man come my lord if you find a more cross it means some have come to visit the relatives here if you find less it means some have gone to visit the relatives elsewhere akbar was pleased very much by the well sweet okay read on yes read on read on read once again okay you have read it now shall we try to answer it see the first question please what sort of questions did akbar put to his courtiers try to answer it please right what was the strange question raised by akbar right now why did the courtiers hang their heads low right why did people give the answer without even a moment's thoughts okay last question how did akbar respond to people's answer okay yes you might have written it now let us see the answers let us verify the answers first one what sort of questions did akbar put to his courtiers enganda chodyangala choichu ready illa it can be answered in two ways strange and witty questions one thing is the riddles and puzzles rendu petta kadangadagalu അത് പിന്നെ അങ്ങനത്തെ പ്രശ്നങ്ങൾ എന്താ പറയുക കടങ്ങര പോലത്തെ ചോദ്യങ്ങളാണ് റെഡി അല്ലേ ഓക്കെ വാട്ട് വാസ് ദ സ്ട്രേഞ്ച് ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ റൈസ്ഡ് ബൈ അക്ബർ ഇറ്റ്സ് എ വെരി സിമ്പിൾ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഹൗ മെനി ക്രോസ് ആർ ദർ ഇൻ ദി സിറ്റി വാട്ട് ദ കോർട്ടിയസ് ഹാങ് ദ ഹെഡ്സ് ലവ് ഇൻ സെർച്ച് ഓഫ് ആൻ ആൻസർ ഓർ ബിക്കോസ് ദ കുഡിൻ്റ് ഫൈൻ ദ ആൻസർ ഉത്തരം കിട്ടാത്ത കൊണ്ടാണ് തല താഴ്ത്തിയത് വൈ ബിബിൾ ഗീവ് ദി ആൻസർ വിതൗട്ട് ഹീമൻ എ മൊമെൻസ് ഥാൻ എന്തുകൊണ്ടാണ് ഒരു നിമിഷം പോലും ചിന്തിക്കാതെ ഉത്തരം പറഞ്ഞത് ആൻസർ ഐ ബീബൽ ന്യൂ ദ നേച്ചർ ഓഫ് ദി എംബറർ അദ്ദേഹത്തിന്റെ പ്രകൃതി അറിയാം ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഹി കുഡിൻ ഗീവ് ദ കറക്റ്റ് ആൻസർ ആർക്കും അറിയില്ല കറക്റ്റ് ഉത്തരം സോ അപ്ലൈഡ് സ്പീറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ടു ആൻസർ ദ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ റൈറ്റ് ഹൗ ഡിഡ് അക്ബർ റെസ്പോണ്ട് ടു ബീബൽ സാൻസർ ഹി വാസ് പ്ലീസ്ഡ് വെരി മച്ച് ബൈ ബീബൽ സ്പീറ്റ് ഓക്കെ ദിയസ് റൈറ്റ് now shall we move on okay now what again we do we make a nice happiness we have to do it that is why we are doing this i am going to do it in the way that you do it do it that will be a very nice experience okay now let us see the next the passage appeared in the next evaluation clocks the clock is a very old invention sandals 
uh, were used in ancient times. Sundials work by measuring shadows that they are cast by the sun. Candle clocks were used a very long time ago. Candle clocks work by measuring the time it takes for the wax to melt. Our hourglasses are similar to candle clocks because they also measure the time it takes for something to happen. Our glasses work by measuring the time it takes for sand to pour through a small opening into the egg glass. Mechanical clocks appeared in the 13th century in Europe. They work with a system of moving gears. The gears always move at the same speed and the clock work with a swinging weight. The swinging weight is called the pendulum. The pendulum makes a clock pass move. Now, people typically use mechanical clocks or digital clocks. Digital clocks show numbers on a screen. The numbers represent the time. Some people use auditory clocks. Auditory clocks are language to tell the time allowed. Computers also use clocks. Computers use internal clocks in order to work properly. In, our, in today's world, clocks are everywhere. In homes, house schools, offices and the public places. Many people live their lives according to clock. People go to work and return home according to clock. School days start and end according to the clock. Aeroplanes take off and land a contact clock. It's fun to imagine a world without clocks. Okay, read on this. Why can I post it? Okay. Right. Shall we try to answer the see the questions? First question. What were the different types of clocks used in ancient times? Simple question. You find the answer and write it. Right. Next question. How does the candle clock work? A simple one. Right. Next, what is the advantage of a mechanical clock? Write it. Now, what kind of clock would you suggest for a blind person? Advantage means Adina Menma Guna Matchanokanaka Okay, it is the right. Last question. Why does the author say that it's fun to imagine a world without clocks? In the one done, clock is the logo of the Okay, it is there. You might have seen that. Okay, now let us see the answers. What were the different types of clocks used in ancient times? You see, sundials were the candle clocks were the our classes were the okay. Next one, how does the candle clock work? Right? See, in a candle clock work another by measuring the time it takes for the wax to melt. Okay. What's the advantage of mechanical clock? The gears in the mechanical clock always move at the same speed, hence the time will be precise. Okay. What kind of clock would you suggest for a blind person? Why does the other say that it is fun to imagine a world without clock? People go to work and return home according to the clock. School days start and end according to the clock and Everything in the world is dependent on the functioning of the clock. So a world without a clock will be in utter chaos. Right? Right. Clear on the age. Ariadia Rajagatala and then a preamble of Kola Harai Kamaru. Pure noisy disorder and a chaos. Ready. A paradigm go report. Ready. Thrust Bagnian class on the chamber. The Sandosh and Dawe. Chido Kane. Shall we move on to the last question? 2019. Last year's previous year's question. Last year's question. Okay. There was a man who had four sons. He wanted his sons to learn not to judge things too quickly. So he sent the mates to go and look at a pear tree that was a great distance away. The first son went in winter and the second in spring, the third in summer and the youngest son in autumn. When they had all gone and returned, he called them together to describe what they had seen. The first son said that the tree was ugly, burned and twisted. The second son said 
It was covered with green buds and full of blossoms that smelled so sweet and looked so beautiful. It was the most graceful thing he had ever seen. The third son disagreed with all of them. He said it was ripe and drooping with the fruit, full of life and fulfillment. The fourth son disagreed and said that the tree was covered with red leaves and the floor was carpeted with golden leaves. The man then explained to his sons that they had each seen one season in tree's life. He told them that they couldn't judge a tree or a person by only one season, but could only be measured at the end when all the seasons were up. If you give up when it is winter, winter, you will miss the promise of your spring and the fulfillment of your summer, beauty of your autumn. He said, don't judge your life by one difficult season. Don't let the pain of one season destroy the joy of all the rest. Okay, this is a very nice, very uh, 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 informative passage or story. Okay, right. Read on once again. See the questions. Where did the man send his son to learn the lesson of life? See, find out the answer. Next one. How the second son described the tree? Third one. How was the tree in autumn season? Fourth, what made the father say that no one can judge a tree by only one season? Last question, what mercy did the father give his sons? Okay, I think all of you have written the answers. Okay, otherwise you please pause it and write it then let us see the answers right first question where did uh, the man send his sons to learn the lesson of life okay where there was sent a peer tree that was a great distance away clear i think how did the second son describe the thing and now the morning and i describe it the second son described but it was covered with the green buds and full of blossoms that smelled so sweet and looked so beautiful okay now how was the tree in autumn season autumn season okay right in autumn season the tree was covered with red leaves and the floor was carpeted with the golden leaves okay right okay right what made the father say that no one can judge a tree by only one season? In Donda Parayagana because they had seen only one season in the tree's life. So they couldn't judge a tree by only one season. We had to see all the seasons, then only we can judge it. Okay. Now last question. Please read the last question. What message did father the father give his son in the message and don't judge a life by one difficult season don't let the pain of one season destroy the joy of all the rest we have to go to the past 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 Okay, thank you for hope you have learned what we have discussed. Thank you for watching. If you haven't described yet, please uh, sorry, if you haven't subscribed yet, you have to subscribe. Okay. Meet you again till then goodbye.